Good afternoon and welcome to another uh, episode of Condo Insider. Uh, I, my name is Jane Sugimura. I'm going to be your host for this uh, uh, this show. And you know, I'm doing a series of shows, and 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 this title of the series is resources. And and what I hope to do uh, during each of these uh, Condo Insider episodes is to talk about resources for condo owners, residents, and other people who uh, work around condo associations. And today, my special guest is Lori Size, and she's a condo specialist with the State of Hawaii Department of uh, Commerce and Consumer Affairs Real Estate Branch. Uh, hi, Lori. Thank you for being my hi. guest today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, you know, why don't we tell people? I mean, I mean, uh, so, some people may not know how your department is involved in, you know, condominium associations. So, you know, how, how are they related? Okay. So, I mean, of course, under the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs, there's are, there are many divisions and the real estate branch falls under the professional and vocational licensing division. So I'm in the branch and um, we are split in two. We have a real estate side and a condominium side, and I am on the condominium side. And um, as you said, we we deal with condominiums and um, condominium associations do register with the real estate branch and um, also just the condominium projects register with the branch. And you guys have a, a, a condo ed fund that you administer, right? Yes. So um, per statute, um, the associations pay into this condominium education trust fund and the monies from the fund are used for various things. Um, for instance, for funding the condominium specialist positions, and there are four of us at the branch, mm -hmm. uh, two who deal with the projects and the um, developer side and two which includes myself, who deal on the governance side. Um, so, and the fund of course also goes for things like mediation. So it's education as well as um, mediation is something that the fund um, subsidizes as well. Okay, well, you know, let's talk about the condominium specialist. So, so, okay. what, so tell our viewers what you do. <laughs> okay, so basically, I mean, my primary role is education. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, whether it's people that are calling in with questions about their statute, the statute, or, you know, they're just, they live in a condo and there's some kind of problem. Usually people call us because there's a problem. They don't call us because everything is going well, right? Yeah. So they have questions, you know, maybe they want a certain document and they can't get it. They've requested it and they can't get it. So, you know, they'll ask, you know, can, am, I, am I entitled to it? You know, what, what, what should I do? That sort of thing. So mm -hmm. we, we try to educate so that, you know, they know uh, what the statute allows. And we also try to get people familiar with, you know, living in a condo because most people buy a condominium, but they don't really know how it operates, you know, mm -hmm. they, they're buying it, but they don't really understand the mechanics behind it. And, you know, you're given this huge stack of papers when you buy, but you know, who really reads that, right? I mean, let's, let's be honest. So we kind of, you know, we're here to educate people because I guess the, the hope is if people know how a condominium functions and how it's supposed to operate, then, you know, if everybody's on the same page, hopefully there'll be better communication and less problems at least that's you know that's the goal right mm -hmm. yeah and, and and you said that there are some of the two other condominium uh specialists that that work with developers yes developer they're on the developer on the project side and and you know what i think a lot of our listeners don't understand or, or, or don't realize is condominiums are creature uh, creatures of, of statute right they're created by the uh, Hawaii law. And so in order to create a condominium, a developer has to file some papers with your department. That's how they create a condominium. Let's say you've got this empty bare lot. It's just a square lot and somebody wants to build a condominium. So that, and so that's usually the developer. 
So the developer will come and he'll provide you with something called a public report, right? Right. And Which the public, is, yeah. sorry, go ahead. And that's what the public <laughs> report is. Well, I mean, you know, basically it's information, right? It's disclosures, it's information specifications about the project um, so that, you know, people know um, what they're buying. I think you could probably elaborate that even more, uh, more on that than I can, but, you know, that's my basic understanding how I would basically, um, you know, it's, it's a report with all kinds of information in it. Right. About and so, so if, if a developer was going to build a condominium, he would file a public report. He basically would say, OK, I've got this one acre square lot and I'm going to build three towers, three condominium towers. And I'm going to call it uh, Aloha Condominiums. And there's going to be three towers and each tower is going to be 25 stories high. And in each condo uh, condominium, is going to have 400 units. It's going to have this many one bedroom and this many two bedrooms. And you know we're going to have and and we're going to have amenities. We're going to have a swimming pool and we'll have a tennis court and we'll have all these. You know we'll have a barbecue area and you know we'll have a dog park. And so he the developer basically writes all of this into a, a document called a public report and. He, he's also required to, you know, put in um, uh, information about what's going to be in the declaration, and 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 so 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 this is a document that basically creates a, the, the condominium after he files with the state of Hawaii that he owns the land, right? So, and and he comes and he and 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 your department is the one who basically generally approves that condominium. And says, okay, we reviewed all the paperwork and 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 there and there, you have a, like a checklist that the developer has to submit all this information to the Correct. state of Hawaii, right? And you just right. make sure that he's done that. And once the, the the developer has done that, he gets permission to okay. Now you've you know your public report has been reviewed and approved and and whatnot. So you can go out and start building your condominium and selling the selling units right and and doing things like that. Correct. And so and and um and uh and and after it's built, then um uh then the the condominiums have to register with you, and so that you know you have a list uh, of all the condominiums in the state of Hawaii because they do need to register with the with your department. Right, right, right. So yes, we do have, I mean, you can search it if, if someone wanted to search it, you know, um, search the list of registered associations that is on our website. So that is something that's searchable and you can find out that information. Um, but yes, you're correct. Okay, and, and you know, and one of the, the things that you, you guys do and I guess this is, and I got a call from a HOA that was developed under 421J, and they wanted to do a RICO, a RICO complaint. And they, you know, and they were told, oh, but you know, you can't file a claim. And it's like, well, why can't we file a claim? Uh, and it's like, because you're not, you know, a regulated industry like condominiums are, where condominiums can file for a RICO action, right? Because they're regulated by the DCCA. I mean, yes, the, there are um, there are certain sections of the statute where someone can file a complaint with RICO. I think earlier I mentioned, you know, like sometimes people will ask for records and they don't get them. So that's one area of the statute where you can file a complaint. Um, you know, you requested a copy of the minutes or you requested a copy of the financial statements, whatever it is, and you didn't get it, you can file a complaint with RICO. But as you know, most of the statute is self-governing. It's, it's based on the philosophy of self-governance and self-enforcement. So normally when there is a problem or a disagreement, you know, the, the ways to resolve that are mediation, arbitration, or uh, you know, legal action. So it's not like Rico will take a complaint about anything, you, you know. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you mentioned before that you know the condominiums register uh, with your department, and you know they they also pay a registration fee that goes yes. into the condominium education fund. And that we're getting getting to your topic, but <laughs> one of one of the issues, one of the things that they. And, 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 you know, I'm always so surprised when condo people don't know this, 
that they're paying every two years, every biennial. I told them, I, you know, I'm the board president of my condominium. I actually signed the check, you know, that goes to the, you know, state of Hawaii, you know, for the biennial registration. And I says, you know, so, you know, I'm sure somebody in your condominium is signing the check, you know, every, and, and they've been doing this now, it's got to be 30 years. They've been collecting the money and, and uh, they've been, you know, putting it into a fund. It's a special fund and they use it for special purposes. And one of the special purposes is education. And, 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 and when I he, he, you get questions, well, how come they're collecting it from us? And I says, well, many, 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 many years ago, there was this huge fight and that landed up in circuit court and all these judges got involved and, and it cost the homeowners a whole lot of money for lawyers. And, you know, the, and, and, and in the end, the judge came down with a decision that the board had breached its fiduciary duty and we had mass resignations all over, uh, you know, from boards looking at, you know, reading the newspapers, oh, no, I don't want to get sued. And um, the state of Hawaii decided, hey, we're going to set up, an, you know, we're going to set up money and we're going to set it aside so that, the, you know, we're going to have resources so that condo boards and owners can be educated on what their rights and obligations are. And we're going to make them resolve their lawsuits outside of a courtroom because the courtroom takes too long. And, you know, people have to live in a building. They're going to end up killing each other, right? Right. All kinds of shenanigans went on. And that lawsuit went on for like six years, I think. And it was, it was really awful. And so that's how the condo ad fund was set up. And it was basically uh, to require the state and, and CAI and my, my organization, Hawaii Council, uh, you know, we set up or, you know, educational seminars to train because we get, you know, the state does subsidize those seminars. I mean, partially subsidizes it because it, it promotes the goal of education. The whole purpose of this education thing is to tell condo owners and residents what their rights are and, and boards what their rights and obligations are and to provide a platform where they can resolve these disputes quickly, cheaply, right? Because in for condos, that money that gets put into the condo ed fund subsidizes evaluative mediation and voluntary arbitration. Right. right. So that yes. if you go, if if you get the other side to go into evaluative mediation, the state of Hawaii will basically write a check to the mediator, you know, for the mediator's professional time to try to get that resolved. And you might and, and you know, to me, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful use of those funds because it keeps people out of the courtroom. And 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 I, you know, and I tell legislators basically that, you know, when, when we were testifying on those bills, that the judges hate these condominium cases. And I always get scolded. I said, you know, they, they, they tell me, Jane, how come these people are always fighting with each other? Why can't you guys get along? I said, I don't know. That's the million dollar question. I mean, you have you know, a thousand people living in a condominium and, you know, they're, you're bound to get, you know, personalities that don't get along. And, you know, you end up with disputes and it's really hard. It's really hard when you live in the same building or the same complex. And that's why it's so good that we have resources that will allow these people to resolve their disputes. But today we're gonna to be talking about another resource that that money is used to fund and that's education, right? Right, right. And so, so mm -hmm. you have a, you guys have a wonderful website and you know, anytime somebody asks me about a question, I said, you know what, there's a website on the DC and you go to the, the state of Hawaii and just put in real estate commission or real estate branch. And it will take you to this website and it's the most amazing website. And, you know, I've had people to call me back and say, you know, Jane, that was really a great website. And I said, yeah, so how come people don't know about this? You guys should advertise I mean, your website a lot more. Yeah, that's really the million dollar question because um, unfortunately, like you say, we try to get the word out, you know, in various ways, but there still seems like there's a lot of people that don't know that our website exists. So 
Um, yeah, it's, it, it is unfortunate. Um, but I'm glad that you're plugging our website, you know, uh, that's, yeah, and that's wonderful. All, the, all the, 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 the times that I've ever spoken about the evaluative mediation, I always plug in, you know, even on the Condo Insider Show, we have it scrolled, the website, you know, so that people can just kind of click on it. And I says, you want to know how to do evaluative mediation and have the state of Hawaii pay for it? Here's the website. Go to the website and I will tell you how to do it. But if you, you, know, you, if you don't, you know, you can't always have me on a recording, go to the website and the website will tell you exactly how it's done. And that's yeah. the, you know, that's your resource. You know, if you want to uh, find out how the state of Hawaii is going to pay for the mediator to meet and all you have to do is write the letter to the board and say you know pursuant to 514 b 161 i demand evaluative mediation on this issue and they have to because if they don't do it we we went in when we did the statute we said you know if they don't agree to it you can go to court and recover your attorney's fees to compel them to do mediation. And once you get them into mediation, the state of Hawaii writes the check. And I remember, who was I talking to? Uh, I was talking to somebody over at um, Dispute Resolution Prevention. And she told me, yeah, I will call them. Yeah, they send us a check. And you know, so, so I know that the state of Hawaii does write the check and sends it over to the mediators to pay for them. So, you know, I think, I think that's a wonderful program. And like I said, you know, I, I send people to your website all the time if they call me about dispute resolution because, you know, they're not gonna remember everything I said. I said, so if you don't, you know, if you forget what I told you, go to the website. And so today you have other stuff that you've got <laughs> on the website, right? Yes, yes. So tell us about this new program. So we have the we have um, and we have a bunch of resources, but the newest resource is our condominium educational videos. Mm -hmm. So these are on our website. It is a series of 15 videos. They're short and sweet. they are three to five minutes each. They're interesting. They're engaging. Um, you know, professional actors, um, you know, neat sets. Um, it's it they're fun to watch you know it's not the boring kind of um someone just you know monotone lecture it's they're fun so anyway they're on a, a bunch of different you know subjects and they're just really great if you just want to you know get some information and not spend a whole lot of time because you can watch one you know and then you know if you have a few minutes you can watch one and you don't have to watch them all at the same time you can go back to them if you want to refer to them but anyway the series is called Hawaii condo living guide and again it's on our website um, there are like I said, 15 different videos. So things like, um, you know, owner's rights and responsibilities, board's rights and responsibilities, a mediation, you know, as we were talking about, um, what to do, you know, when you're purchasing a condo. Um, we also talk about governance issues. We talk about um, governing documents, meetings, requesting records, budgeting, special assessments. I mean, there's just a whole bunch of topics that we talk about. And so um, they're, they're good. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback from the people who have watched the videos, that they've enjoyed them, they've learned. It's an interesting you know, way of, of learning. So um, yeah, I mean, I really want everybody to check them out. Um, and if you're listening to the show and you know you have other owners or neighbors or your board or family members or friends or whoever that lives in a condo, please let them know that these videos exist and share this information with them. Okay. And um, so what if there's a topic there that, um, I mean, a, a topic that you know somebody wants to learn about and it's not on these videos can they somehow contact your 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 department or and and ask you guys to you know do a video i mean are you going to have future are you thinking about adding to this uh, library of uh, videos you know i mean it's a possibility but at the moment we just finished it you know it 
it, we just finished it at the end of June and we don't have plans to have more videos, but you know, it, it's not set in stone, we could. And mm -hmm. yeah, if people have, you know, we do, uh, besides videos, I mean, we have brochures, we, we have over 25 brochures. We have Condorama that we do twice a year, which used to be in person, but now, you know, with, with the whole pandemic, we do it, um, you know, online as a webinar. Um, as you said, you know, we, we um, subsidize uh, HCCA and CAI. Um, we have a condo bulletin that we do quarterly. So there's a whole lot going on. And yeah, if, if people have, you know, feel like there's a topic they want more information on, or, you know, we can do a brochure, maybe a video if we do more videos, um, talk about it in our bulletin. Um, yeah, they can definitely submit that to us. And, you know, they could either call and ask to speak to a condo specialist, or they can email um, the branch, you know, and direct the inquiry to a condo specialist. We actually would welcome that because, you know, we go, we go by the calls we get and the things that we think are important and the areas where we see problems. And, and that's kind of how we decided on the video topics. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there might be other situations or you know, um, things that people want to know about, and we may not know that. So yeah, we would appreciate and encourage people to share that with us. Okay, and and so they can call you and why don't you tell us, give us an email address and a phone number. Okay, so our email address is HIREC. It stands, it's H-I-R-E-C. It stands for Hawaii Real Estate Commission at dcca.hawaii.gov. So again, it's HIREC at dcca.hawaii.gov. It's also on our website if, you know, if you don't remember it or, um, <laughs> you know, and, and the phone number is 808. I believe now you have to use the 808 um, when you're right. dialing. So 808-586-2644. Okay, do it. And it's again, 808 586 2644. Yes, you got it. So, really, we would welcome any suggestions, any input. Um, because again, we're here, you know, to provide education. And if and if there's some area that we haven't covered that people would like us to, then we definitely want to know about it. Okay, and I and I uh, noticed too that you covered budget and reserve funding also in your three to five minute. How do you cover a, a, <laughs> a subject that broad with? With, with a three to five minute video? Well, you know, you, you have to understand, I mean, we're covering the high points, right? I mean, we're mm -hmm. kind of hitting the high points and summarizing. It's not, uh, you know, obviously a detailed um, course in, in the subject, uh -huh. but um, yeah, I mean, you know, we wrote these scripts and um, tried to keep it under five minutes because, you know, you tend to lose people's, um, you tend to lose people's attention after that you know no one really wants to watch it longer but yeah it, it was a little bit of a challenge to try to condense it um into a a short video yeah but we did but you know, but, but, you know talking you know about, about the budget and reserves um i know that that's going to be of, of interest you know this next legislative session because of what happened in florida the collapse of that building and, you know, and we do have a very strong uh, budget and reserves, you know, statute. And so I think, you know, now people are going to be spending, you know, more time. And, and, and when that law was passed, I know, I know, and this probably gives me away, you know, gives away my age, but I can remember that the DCCA hired uh, somebody from the UH to, to, pre to prepare manuals on the budget and reserves and it's like a how to manual how to do how to set up your budget and reserves and your do your reserve study and 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 my understanding is the manual is still on your website right i know we have um some old older um 
manuals on our website. I think there's something from, gosh, I don't know if it's like the late 90s. So right. there are, yeah, we do have um, some information that's been there a while as well as new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that might be something that you might want to um, advertise because, you know, to me, that's really, I mean, that's where people, you know, when, 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 when people have asked me, you know, when, when the law, when, and when it happened, I got calls from the legislators, oh, do we have to pass a law? I said, no, the last thing we need is more legislation. And I said, we have a very strong budget and reserve statute. Maybe people are going to be asking that you beef it up because, you know, I think a lot of boards kind of take it for granted and now they're being told. Well, you know, you can't mess with your reserves and you can't mess with, you know, with your budget. And, you know, and people used to think, oh, it was a good thing not to raise maintenance fees. But what happens if you don't raise maintenance fees year after year after year, you end up with a Florida situation where people are, are fighting about, oh, I don't want to pay to do these repairs. And you have a building collapse. I mean, this is, I mean, it was a wake up call. It was a, you know, to, to me, it was an awful wake up call. Because it was because I'm sure everybody who lived in a condominium thing went home that night and figured, oh my God, is it going to happen? And you look for cracks in the walls and the you know thing. Oh my God, you know if it happened in Florida, it could happen here. You know we live by the ocean and and stuff like that. And so I really think that you know people are going to start looking at that. And I and and I and I told legislators, I said, you know, I would check with the DCCA because I think they got the manual. They, they spent a lot of money to hire somebody from UH, and then they went and, you know, they took the dog and pony show to every a neighbor island. And it was a how to set up your budget, how to do a reserve study. And, you know, they did that. And, you know, it was a long time ago, and maybe they're going to have to do it again to reinforce, you know, uh, the fact that, you know, we have this law. We don't need new laws. We might have to clarify and maybe beef up this one. But, you know, I think that might be an area that people might be interested in. And, you know, how do we avoid a Florida collapse issue? I mean, what can we do so that it doesn't happen to us? You know, that kind of stuff. But, you know, I know you guys have got the resources. And so, and I told the legislators, and, and one of the legislators emailed me back and said, oh, yeah, I contact. they told me they got the manuals. I said, see, I told you, you know, they don't throw anything away. And, it's on, and they were the ones who told me it's on your website. That's what I said. You have this terrific website with all this information that if people would only look, and now what we need to do is get the word out that there is this terrific website, State of OA, it's free. And all you have to do is log on. And if you don't have a computer, just go to a library and you know, log on, State of Hawaii, Real Estate Commission. And you'll, you'll see all these different topics. And you know, and you know, you can stay, you know, be there for hours, right? Yeah, that's it's true. I mean, there's a lot of information on the website, like you said. And so yeah, you could spend a lot of time on it. I don't know if someone would really want to do that, but you know, there is a ton of information. Right. And, and you know, to me, I, 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 you know, that that's what I told the legislators. Hey, let's not reinvent the wheel. We already have, you know, pretty good legislation and maybe we got to take a look at it and see where we can tighten things up or maybe get out on an educational program to, you know, and, and, and I told them that, you know, maybe that's one thing you could do is to direct the real estate commission, the real estate branch to do educational flyers, focusing on budget and reserves. They want to avoid the Florida situation, then they got to be, you know, I mean, budgetary reserve, reserves was one of these really boring topics that they, yeah, that nobody really wanted to think about. But now I think the focus is there. It's like, my God, you know, the board is getting, the board got sued in Florida. Does that mean we can get sued? Sure you can. You know, you have, if you don't take, you know, certain steps and, you know, the building falls down, sure you can get sued. Right. And, and, right. And, and, and we've seen it. And so, yeah. So, the, so now there's a lot of board members thinking, oh my God, what do I have to know so that I don't get sued? You know? And, you know, so, you know, I think, I think that those documents are going to be really relevant, but I, you know, we run out of time, but I think, you know, what we've done in this episode is to show our viewers what a resource there is on the state website, right? Real right. estate branch 
about condominiums. It's like anything you want to know about a condominium, you can find out on their website. Yes. So including check it out. <laughs> right, including this new program and the department welcomes input on new topics and how to do things better, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely we want to know. We do want to know if people have topics that they'd like us to cover. Okay, well, thank you, Lori, for being my guest today and sharing this information. And, and I hope I hope as a result that people will start using that website. Like I said, it, it is a terrific website. It's got all this information on it. Anything that you could possibly want to know about condominiums. And I want to congratulate you and your colleagues for putting that together and administering, you know, doing everything you do to administer that website. Well, thank you, Jane, and I hope you're right. I hope a lot of people will now check out our website. Yeah, yeah. And watch really the agree. videos. <laughs> okay, watch the videos. Okay, and thank you to our viewers for joining us for another episode of Crown on Cider, and please join us next week uh, at three o'clock on Thursday for another episode. Mahalo and uh, aloha. <laughs>